my words are misinterpreted, I want to make it absolutely clear. I'm not generally for boycotts, that's not the kind of conservative I am. I'm rising to speak in favour of a diplomatic boycott, which is very different to a sporting boycott. And a diplomatic boycott of the Olympic Games is nothing new, as has been mentioned in many speeches today. I also want to put on record that these Olympics will no doubt take place and I will be supporting our British athletes and hoping they win gold at every competition yeah, yeah, that takes yeah, yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. But that's very different, Mr Deputy Speaker, to supporting the CCP yeah. as it sports washes what's happening in Xinjiang. Mr Deputy Speaker, as you know, I'm one of the MPs sanctioned by the Chinese Communist Party, not for committing a gross human rights abuses or for being a, a terrorist or a warlord, unless my colleagues have something they wish to share about themselves, if they've been <laughs> sanctioned to, but for rising to speak up against genocide. And if my government thinks that it has any way in persuading the CCP to conduct itself any differently to our values and our norms, then I'm afraid that it has lost <clears throat> the plot completely. If there's any confusion on what this House views on genocide, just three months ago, the Parliament, our Parliament, this Parliament took a decision based on the evidence. It was an unprecedented decision to unanimously declare that all five markers of genocide were being met at the hands of the CCP against the Uyghur in Xinjiang. Let me just remind people, of course one of the markers is killing members of a group, also causing seriously bodily or mental harm, inflicting conditions of life calculated to bring about physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births, and we know that with the forced sterilisation of Uyghur women, and the barbaric act that's taking place amongst Uyghur families when Uyghur children in their hundreds of thousands are separated from their parents. And this is what's taking place in China and this is what they don't want us to talk about as these games take place. Of course we're, a sign a sign we're signatures to the 1948 Convention on the Crime of Genocide which is why I would never use the word lightly and before the minister at the dispatch box has to hold that embarrassing position that only the UN can declare genocide. We know the UN is broken when it comes to preventing or let alone researching genocide when it comes to China. We should also reflect on what this House has said as well. We're not the only ones in the world who recognises that the evidence exists that genocide is taking place. Netherlands, Slovakia, Canada, Czech Republic have all held their own motions. And Biden's administration has continued to declare the situation in Xinjiang as an ongoing active genocide. And more importantly, Mr Deputy Speaker, I wondered if you could take a message back to Mr Speaker in reflection on what um, the State Speaker Nancy Pelosi has spared, said about the um, Olympic Games. She has on record to say that she is supporting a diplomatic boycott on those grounds. It would be maybe um, an opportune moment at some point for Mr Speaker to let us know what his own position is because somebody in this place has to reflect the view of this House. And unfortunately, I'm worried that um, the government may not be able to be bold enough to hold that line. My anxiety is that if we have diplomats and politicians attending the, the Beijing Olympics or the Genocide Olympics, as has been referred to as earlier on, it enables the CCP to sports wash what is happening in Xinjiang. and also makes a mockery of everything that we stand for. When the Foreign Secretary talks about internment camps, arbitrary detention, political re-education, forced labour, torture and forced sterilisation on, an on, on an industrial scale, what does it mean if we then turn up to these genocide Olympics? And I know it's difficult for government, but politics is about choices. And we, at some point, have to defend our values and our British laws. And actually, a diplomatic boycott will have an impact and is a low-risk, high-reward way of establishing global Britain's values. As the Foreign Secretary has already been on record to say, we have a moral duty to respond, and we can, by making sure we do not have diplomatic presence, presence at the Olympics. And it's nothing new. I believe that the uh, previous Prime Minister, David Cameron, did not attend the 2014 Winter Olympics following the country passing anti-LGBT laws. Let's remind ourselves that the CCP believes that homosexuality is a mental illness, and they are killing or destroying millions of Uyghur people. So the situation is no better, but I would argue much worse, worse, so we should not be turning up diplomatically at the Genocide Olympics.
There is some anxiety that we can't take action unilaterally, but this is also a nonsense. Many parliaments around the world are currently debating or dis discussing or already putting motions in place to ensure that politicians and diplomats are turning up at these Olympics going forward. What's also quite exciting to note is how forceful and bold the Biden administration is being on this official. Very recently, just last night, that also moved a motion in the Senate to declare that all goods coming in from Xinjiang are slave labour goods and they will be now blacklisted or not allowed to be imported into America. And these are the emotions that we should be moving in this House, not having a position that says, on the one hand, this is an industrial scale version of human rights abuses, and on the other hand, saying there's nothing that we can do. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, politics isn't for the faint-hearted. Every decision has consequences, but a diplomatic boycott will enable us to stand by what this House believes and what our allies have believed, that a genocide is taking place in Xinjiang. The Games last 16 days, or around 1.3 million seconds. That's a second for every Uyghur imprisoned, abused, forced into labour under President Xi. We as Global Britain have to make a stand. Do we stand by those oppressed, or do we stand by President Xi? What feels like a lifetime ago, the 1936 Olympics, which weren't boycotted and also did not stop the slaughter of millions of Jews. We cannot make the same mistake again. I urge this House to support this motion and push for a full diplomatic boycott of the Genocide Games, and I thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Yeah.